Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 40 days to go into GCSE Math exam, that first paper, so you up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of error intervals. So in this video, I'm going to go through what error intervals are, and I'm also going to give you some questions to try yourself. So I really hope you're going to find this video useful, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to look at error intervals. So we've got our first question here. It says the length of a line, L centimetres, is measured as 18 centimetres correct to the nearest centimetre. So in other words, whenever this line is measured, it's 18 centimetres to the nearest centimetres. Whenever it's rounded, it's 18 centimetres. Whenever it's been rounded to the nearest centimetre. And we've been asked to use inequalities to write down the error interval for L. So let's start off by considering what length the line could be. So for instance, it could be exactly 18 centimetres. It could be 17.9 centimetres, because that would round up to 18 centimetres. It could be 17.6 centimetres. It could even be 17.5 centimetres, but it couldn't be anything below this. So for instance, it couldn't be 17.49 centimetres, because that would round down to 17 centimetres rather than up to 18. So it could be any of these values, but it couldn't be this. So it has to be, the length of the line has to be greater than or equal to 17.5 centimetres. Now, in terms of above 18 centimetres, because obviously the line could be longer than 18 centimetres and round down to 18 centimetres, so it could be 18.1 centimetres, it could be 18.4 centimetres, it could be 18.4999 centimetres, but it couldn't be 18.5 centimetres. So it could be 18.1, 18.4, it could be 18.4999, but it couldn't be 18.5 because 18.5 would round up to 19 centimetres. So in terms of our error interval, the length of the line L is anything that is greater than or equal to 17.5 centimetres, but it's got to be less than 18.5 centimetres. It goes anything up to, but not including 18.5 centimetres. So that's the error interval for the length of the line, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So Amelia rounds a number Y to the nearest 10. So there's a certain number Y, and Amelia rounds it to the nearest 10. And the result is 40. And we've been asked to write down an error interval for Y. So in terms of the number that was rounded to the nearest 10, well, it could have been 40. When you run that to the nearest 10, you get 40. It could have been 39, because when you run that to the nearest 10, that would be 40. It could have been 38.4. If we run that to the nearest 10, that would be 40. It could even be anything as low as 35, because 35, when you run that to the nearest 10, you get 40. But anything below 35 would run down to 30. So 35 is the lowest possible number that it could be. So that means that the number Y would have to be bigger than or equal to 35. Now, in terms of numbers bigger than 40 that round down to 40 to the nearest 10, well, that could be 40.5 when you run that to the nearest 10, that would be 40. It could be 43 when you run that to the nearest 10, you would get 40. It could be 44.99 when you run that to the nearest 10, that would be 40. But it couldn't be 45. It could be anything up to, but not including 45. So in terms of y, the number that was rounded, the number that Amelia has, well, y would have to be anything that's bigger than or equal to 35, that's the lowest possible number it could be, and anything up to, but not including 45. And that's it, that's the error interval for y. y would have to be bigger than or equal to 35, but less than 45, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so here's a question I have for you to try. It says, Josh rounds the number n to the nearest thousand. So he has this number, n, and he rounds it to the nearest thousand. His result is 7,000. Write down an error interval for n. So feel free to press pause now to try this question. Okay, so in terms of n, well, it could be 7,000. When you run that to the nearest thousand, that would be 7,000. But it could also be numbers below 7,000. So, for instance, it could be 6,800. If you run that to the nearest thousand, that will be 7,000. It could be 6,600. If we run that to the nearest thousand, that will be 7,000. It could be 6,541. If you run that to the nearest thousand, that will be 7,000. It could even be 6,500. If we run that to the nearest thousand, that will be 7,000. And actually, that's the lowest possible number that it could have been. N, the lowest possible number that n could be would be 6,500 because that's the lowest number that when we round it to the nearest thousand we would get 7,000. Anything below this would round down to be 6,000. Okay, so we know just as number n, n would have to be bigger than or equal to 6,500 because that's the lowest possible number that it could be. So the number has to be bigger than or equal to that. Now let's think of a number bigger than 7,000. Well, it could be 7,001 if we run that to the nearest thousand, that'll be 7,000. It could be 7,400 if we run that to the nearest thousand, then that would be 7,000. It could be 7,499 if we run that to the nearest thousand, that'll be 7,000. It could even be 7,499.871 if we run that to the nearest thousand, that'll be 7,000. But it couldn't be 7,500. 7,500 would round up to be 8,000. So that means that n could be any number up to 7,500. So n would be bigger than or equal to 6,500, but less than 7,500. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. 
Okay, this is another one for you to try. We've got Haley runs a number y to the nearest hundred. So she's running a number to the nearest hundred, and the result is 5,800. Write down an error interval for y. So feel free to press pause now and write down an error interval for y. Okay, so Haley's rounded a number to the nearest hundred, and her answer is 5,800. So obviously she could have started with 5,800, and if she rounds that to the nearest hundred, that would be 5,800. But it could be numbers lower than that. It could be 5,799. If we run that to the nearest hundred, that would be 5,800. It could be 5,780. If we run that to the nearest hundred, that would be 5,800. It could even be 5,750. If we run that to the nearest hundred, that would be 5,800. But it couldn't be anything lower than that, because even a number just slightly under that would then round down to be 5,700, then up to be 5,800. Okay, so we know that y has got to be bigger than or equal to 5,750. Okay, now let's think of numbers bigger than 5,800. It could be 5,801. If we run that to the nearest 100, then that would be 5,800. It could be 5,840. If we run that to the nearest 100, that would be 5,800. It could even be 5,849.99. If we run that to the nearest 100, it would still round down to be 5,800. But it couldn't be 5,850. If we rounded that number to the nearest 100, it would be 5,900. So it could be anything up to, but not including, 5,800. So that means that y would have to be less than 5,850. So it means that y, Haley's number, would have to be bigger than or equal to 5,750, but less than 5,850. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, the length of each side of a regular hexagon is 3.6 centimeters to one decimal place. Write down an error interval for the perimeter, P. Okay, so let's just do a little sketch. I'm just gonna do a little sketch of a regular hexagon. So here we've got a regular hexagon here. And obviously with a regular hexagon, all the sides have got the same length. And we've been asked to find an error interval for the perimeter, P, so the perimeter of this hexagon. So we wanna consider the lowest possible perimeter and what the perimeter can go up to. And we've been told that the length of each side of the regular hexagon is 3.6 centimeters to one decimal place so let's call each side s and each side it would have to be greater than or equal to 3.55 because each side would have the lowest possible length it could be that would round to 3.6 to one decimal place would be 3.55 centimeters and the length of each side could go up to but not include 3.65 centimeters so that's the error interval for each side now in terms of the perimeter, because we've got six sides and they've all got the same length, we could just multiply these by six and that'll give us the perimeter of the shape. For instance, if each side was 3.55 centimeters, 3.55 centimeters, 3.55 centimeters, 3.55 centimeters, 3.55 centimeters, and 3.55 centimeters. If we add those all up or take 3.55 and multiply that by six, that'll give us the smallest possible perimeter for this regular hexagon. So let's do that. And that's equal to 21.3 centimeters. So that means in terms of our perimeter, the perimeter would have to be greater than or equal to 21.3 centimeters. Okay, so that's the smallest possible perimeter. Now let's consider what the perimeter could go up to but not include. So the length of each side would be 3.65 centimeters. It can go up to 3.65 centimeters. It'd be 3.65, 3.65, up to 3.65 up to 3.65 and up to 3.65. So we can go up to but not include 3.65. So if we take our 3.65 and multiply that by six, that'll give us what the perimeter could go up to. So 3.65 multiplied by six is equal to 21.9 centimeters. So the perimeter could go up to but not include 21.9 centimeters. So the error interval for the perimeter of the hexagon would be P is greater than or equal to 21.3 centimeters, but less than 21.9 centimeters. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through error intervals. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. In the description below, I've got a link to the practice questions. So remember to give those practice questions on error intervals shot as well. So keep up the hard work. There's 40 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. So you're getting there. You're doing really, really well. If you've been watching these videos from the beginning, keep it up. You're doing fantastically well. Another 40 to go and you'll be you know, doing really well in that exam. So keep up the hard work and I'll see you tomorrow for the next one. Cheers. Bye.